please be seated. Well, good afternoon. And welcome to not just the members of the class of 2013, but equally importantly, the families and friends and all the folks who have come to gather today to celebrate uh, the successes of this particular class. My name is Dave Douglas. It's my pleasure to serve as Dean of the Law School here at William & Mary. And it's wonderful to have you here. This is always one of my favorite events of the year. And it's, well, it has a certain dignity to it, but it's also meant to be a, a, a fun time of celebration. Some of the uh, awards that we'll celebrate this afternoon have already been given. And in those instances, we'll simply ask the recipient to stand and receive our congratulations. Some of the other uh, awards have been, a uh, few awards have been conveyed at prior ceremonies, and we won't get to every one of those today. But for other awards, many of the awards that either have been conveyed before or will be conveyed here today for the first time, we do invite the recipients to come forward and hope that you will. Now, some of the uh, awards come with a plaque. Let me explain to you how the plaques work. For the most part, uh, the plaques stay at the law school. Uh, <laughs> you will be permitted to hold the plaque, <laughs> to have your photograph taken with the plaque, and then happily return the plaque to Gloria Todd. I think there might be one or two that you actually keep. I, I don't know, but go figure. <laughs> now, some of our most special student awards are being saved for tomorrow, and you'll note those on the back of your uh, little leaflet, and we will, those are saved for uh, some of our most special awards. Now, some of the awards that we'll present today involve several individuals. There'll be a good group of folks that'll come up here. My suggestion is, lest we clap ourselves to the point of injury, you may wish to wait until everybody is up on the stage in that particular cluster before you uh, express your uh, congratulation. But let me say this. Uh, I want you today to, to respond as you feel moved, to cheer, to clap, to say hurrah, because again, this is a fun afternoon. And also feel free, if you'd like, if, if one of your loved ones is receiving an award, feel free to come down up front, take some uh, photographs. We're going to be taking some photographs ourselves, but if you want to slide down here with your uh, cell phone or whatever and take some photographs, that's permitted. Though we'll kind of keep moving things along. We won't sort of hang while everybody gets their photograph taken, but that's, that's acceptable protocol if you'd like to do that. Now, after the ceremony, there's going to be a reception. Typically, we would hold this reception over in the rim yard. Uh, the weather forecasters are saying that that might not be very accommodating to us within about two hours, and so we're actually going to have the reception afterwards back in the law school, in the law school lobby. So I do hope that you'll join us back in the law school when this ceremony is over. We'll proceed directly there for a reception. One more threshold matter. A number of you are probably admiring this mace and wondering, what in the world is that? Uh, it actually has a wonderful history. Uh, it was crafted in England in the mid-19th century. It is an actual copy. There were a certain number of these made in the middle of the 19th century. This was one of them. It's an actual copy of the mace that's used in the House of Commons today. So we're very proud to have it, and we use it at our most special occasions. Now, we begin today's ceremonies with the induction of the new members of the Order of the Coif. The Order of the Coif, to some extent, to some extent is the Phi Beta Kappa of the law school world. It's one of the highest honors that many law schools confer on their graduating students each year. This year, we will admit into order of the COIF the top 10% of the students in the graduating class, which will be 22 students. Let me tell you, before we do that, though, and before we call up the students to be inducted into the order of the COIF, let me tell you a little bit about what this is. It's got a, a pretty wonderful history. It dates back to the 12th century in England. The English Order of the Corf, Coif was an association of some of the most distinguished lawyers and judges in England. Um, the lawyers were ones who had the sole right, at least in the early years, to appear in English courts. You had to be a member of the Order of the Coif. Now, there was much pomp and circumstance in medieval England and later England it, it, that it was associated with induction into the Order of the Coif. Bells were rung, learned addresses were given, there was a great feast that was held, attended sometimes by the crown, uh, typically by uh, members of the nobility and the church. Uh, the feasting lasted often for seven days. Uh, what was one tradition of order of the coif that we have departed from, in addition to seven days of feasting, 
is that apparently the cost of the feasting was, was uh, paid for by the new members of Order of the Coif. We don't do that either. Uh, fortunately for our new members, uh, you're, you're, you're good here today. You just get celebrated and that's it. Now, why are we called the, uh, these inductees Order of the Coif? The Coif. What is, what's, the, what's the meaning here? Well, the, the name comes from a little hood that was worn by the members of the Order of the Coif, sort of like a little bonnet that they wore over their head and tied under their chin. Uh, and this became, this, this a cap uh, was the original uh, indicia of membership in the Order of the Coif. And, and to some extent, it's what evolves from this cap is the wigs that we're familiar with that English barristers wear today. It was always an extraordinarily selective uh, group, as mentioned, uh, having no more than 40 or 45 members at a time in the English Order of the Coif. Uh, and many of the greatest lawyers and judges in English history were members of the Order, such as Blackstone, Bacon, Cook, and Glanville. Today's American Order of the Coif has chapters at only about 80 law schools. Uh, they're, they're a little selective as to who, which law schools are able to have an Order of the Coif. Um, and we are privileged to be one of those law schools and have been since 1981. Now let's proceed with the initiation of the class of 2013 members of Order of the Coif. And I'd like to pro invite Professor Patty Roberts to come forward and to read their names. Good afternoon. It's, I'm delighted to be here and to announce this year's Order of the Coif members of the class of 2013. Please come up when your name is called. Laura Elizabeth Bain. Thomas Payne Burnham. Laura Catherine Dorr. Zachary Andrew Gennett. Brian U. Jividend. Travis Corey Gunn. Alexander Vaughn Horning. Jillian Marie Jacobs. Brian George Kelly. Candace Lindsay Karapke. Kelsey Nicole Kramer. William Zachary Loudon. Samuel Giffen Mann. Barbara June Marmette. Megan Elizabeth Mitchell. Nicholas James Mergolo. Anna Elizabeth Pulliam. Shaanna Marie Ruhlbach, Unisa Somani, Vladislava Soshkina, Rebecca Lorraine Vanderlask, and Catherine Elizabeth Ward. On behalf of your law school and the Order of the Coif, we congratulate you.
Well, congratulations to each one of you. It's a, it's a marvelous honor to be a member of Order of the Coif. We're not quite through, though, with our Order of the Coif initiation. The Order of the Coif permits each law school each year to initiate one other honorary member of the Order of the Coif. Now, the way we do that here at William & Mary is as follows. As I mentioned, we had our Order of the Coif chapter beginning in 1981. So, of course, we had many of our alumni who graduated prior to 1981 who would have been eligible to be a member of the Order of the Coif had we had the society at that time. So the faculty members of the Order of the Coif here at William & Mary Law School take a vote each year, and they decide to confer honorary Order of the Coif membership on one of our alumnus, alumni based on their strong academic performance while in law school, number one, and their professional distinction since their graduation, number two. So this year, it's my great pleasure to initiate into the order of the coif as our honorary member, Charles Midkiff, who graduated from the class of 1970. Let me tell you a little bit about Chuck, and then I'm going to ask him to come up, come forward. Chuck is originally from the Virginia Beach area. He graduated, did his undergraduate work at Old Dominion, graduating magna cum laude. He came to William and Mary as a member of the class in 1970. He served as editor-in-chief of the William and Mary Law Review. He was also active in the Student Bar Association. He went to Vietnam and earned a bronze star. He eventually worked in Richmond, the law firm originally, uh, Christian and Barton. And then in 1987, he formed his own law firm of Midkiff, Muncie, and Ross. He works in a variety of different areas of the law, including energy law, professional malpractice defense, and civil litigation. He has been named a best lawyer in America every year since 1995. He has been named a Virginia super lawyer every year since 2006. He's been active with the law school as a member of the law school alumni association board and on his reunion committees. He has five children. He enjoys sailing. He is a master scuba diver, and he travels extensively. Chuck, if you'd please come forward. It's our great pleasure to initiate you into the honor of the court. just say thank you for this honor, uh, and let me say to the new graduates, um, work hard, you'll get there, you'll have a lot of fun, it's a rewarding career. Also, and I'll make a plug, uh, my firm is about to be the 30th largest firm in the state, and we've hired two lawyers this year, and we're looking for two more for our Fairfax office and for our Bristol <laughs> office, so if anybody's interested, <laughs> so thank you very much. Chuck, you may not, in your scuba diving days, ever have experienced a tidal wave. Uh, I, I <laughs> but you may uh, have a up close and personal. I, I recommend that anyone who would like to go to Fairfax County to uh, have a conversation when this ceremony is over. We now turn to uh, several awards based on academic merit. We begin with the ABA State and Local Government Law Award, which will be presented by Associate Dean Ron Rosenberg. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure today <clears throat> to announce the recipient of the ABA, the American Bar Association State and Local Government Law Award. Uh, Professor Butler and I uh, consulted together on this, and this is for the outstanding performance in the fields of land use and local government. And this year, the award winner is Alexander Horning. Alex. He doesn't follow hand signals very well either. <laughs> hey everybody, 
everybody. My name is Susan Grover, and I've been working here at the law school for 25 years on the faculty. And before I announce this award, I want to say that this is the best class I've seen to date. Class of 2013, congratulations. <laughs> You all know what I mean. Uh, so now this is an award I'm not really supposed to have the honor of presenting, but a colleague of mine, Jason Solomon, was not able to be here today. He very much wanted to be here to present this. It's the ABA BNA Award for Excellence in Health Law. And the reason why he wanted to be here today was that he thinks so highly of the recipient. Um, so the recipient is Shana Rulbach. While she's walking up here, I'll just tell you that her collegiality, her intellectual rigor, and her writing ability are some of the primary things that impress Professor Solomon. Congratulations. The American Bar Association and Bureau of National Affairs Award for Excellence in the Study of Intellectual Property Law honors superior academic performance in that field. Uh, we have many students here at William & Mary who have excelled in the study of IP. I've been very fortunate and honored to teach many of them. But this year, the IP faculty selected two students in particular to receive the award this year. The first recipient earned the highest grade in her class in patent law, had very strong performances in copyright litigation and trademark law. She's a registered patent agent with the US Patent and Trademark Office, holds a BS in mechanical engineering from MIT, served on the Law Review and was the recipient of the Tyler V. Warnman Scholarship in Intellectual Property Law. And she'll join the firm of Kenobi Martins Olson in Bear in Irvine, California. The second recipient earned top grades in four IP courses, covering copyright law, advertising law, copyright litigation, and patent law. His note on social media and US export regulations was published in volume 54 of the Law Review, for which he served as managing editor. And he's also served as an officer of our student Intellectual Property Society. And he'll join the firm of Wilson, Sonsini, Goodrich, and Rosati in Palo Alto, California. We look forward to following both of their careers in IP. I'm very pleased to present the ABA BNA Award for the Excellence in Study of Intellectual Property Law to Debney Dufour and Jared Taylor. I'm Nancy Combs, and I have the privilege of preventing, presenting the Scholarship and Leadership Award bestowed by the American Law Institute Continuing Legal Education Group. This recognition is awarded to the law student in the 2013 class who best represents a combination of scholarship and leadership. And I can tell you the Dean and the Dean of Administration and I had a particularly difficult time selecting the recipient for this award because this class is filled with students who are marvelously successful and marvelously exemplify the kinds of qualities that ALICLE wishes to recognize with this award. But in the end, we did pick an individual who is truly outstanding in scholarship and leadership. And that individual is Tom Burnham. Let me tell you a little bit, let me embarrass Tom a little bit as he's standing there with his certificate. Tom has succeeded brilliantly in the classroom. His grades are exemplary and put him in the highest stratosphere of our class rank. Tom is also an articles editor on the Law Review, the William & Mary Law Review, a position that takes considerable time, energy, and judgment. 
Also taking much time, energy, and judgment is our legal skills program, and Tom earned honors in all four semesters of the legal skills program, which made him a shoe-in for a teaching assistant legal fellow position in that program. He served in that capacity for two years, which is somewhat unusual, both as a 2L, we, we nabbed him early, recognizing his potential, and as a 3L. And it is no understatement to say that Tom has been wildly effective as a teaching assistant. He has earned the respect and the love of his 1L students. Let me read to you a few comments from the teaching evaluations that his 1L students provided about Tom. I, can't, I don't have all day, so I can't read that many, but I can tell you that these are only a small sampling of the kinds of comments that Tom has received. Tom was amazing and so helpful, going above and beyond for the entire firm. Tom went above and beyond for us. I really appreciate everything he did. Tom helped in every aspect of law school, from class prep to citation to test prep. He always had good insights. Tom was incredible. That's in capital letters, mind you. Incredible. <laughs> he was always available and willing to help. He truly cares about our success, and he wants to help in any possible way. He was thoughtful and engaged in class discussions and helped ease any tensions we had about outlining exams and classes. Tom, after graduation, will be entering the JAG Corps, and our military is very, very lucky to get him. I have great privilege. It is my delight to present this award to you, Tom. My name is Nathan Oman. I teach contracts and bankruptcy here at William and Mary, and it is my pleasure to uh, present an award today that recognizes uh, excellence uh, and exceptional potential in the field of failure. <laughs> <laughs> the recipient of uh, this year's American Bankruptcy Institute Award uh, is uh, someone whose interest in bankruptcy predates law school. There are such people. Uh, <laughs> Upon graduation, she is going to be serving as a clerk for one of our nation's bankruptcy judges and has already been uh, recognized as uh, an exceptional uh, potential bankruptcy practitioner uh, and has received special training um, for her uh, clerkship. It gives me great pleasure to present this award to Lauren Ford. scholars are a select group of law students here at the law school who have distinguished themselves by their research in health law and policy. There are two graduating students who are receiving recognition today as Benjamin Rush scholars for papers that they wrote and presented last year as second year students. Spencer Bryson for his paper An Exception Exempted, Redrafting Amtala to Return Decisional Autonomy to Physicians, A Case for Denying Medically Ineffective Treatment in Emergency Room Situations and Dipia Osborne for her paper, Uninformed Consent and the Evasion of Medical Ethics in Globalized Pharmaceutical Testing by American Pharmaceutical Manufacturers. Spencer Dipia, please come to the stage and receive a Benjamin Mush Rush medal and join me in congratulating <laughs> I'm Bill Richardson. I teach tax law. 
Now, I realize it's one of the most abhorred words in the English language, <laughs> tax. But it's actually very important uh, in teaching young people to become tax lawyers, I think, is an important thing to do. Today, I have the rare privilege of announcing the recipient of a new award here at the law school, the John E. Donaldson Award for the most outstanding tax student in the class. Before I name the recipient, I want to tell you a little bit about the man for whom this award is named. John Donaldson is the Ball Professor of Law Emeritus. Having retired from the faculty a dozen years ago, after having served on the faculty of this law school for 35 years, and though it's been a dozen years since he retired, he and his wife Sue remain great friends of this law school and the college. But let's flash back 50 years. In 1963, May of 63, John Donaldson was a 3L, about to graduate. He did pretty well as a student. He was editor of the Law Review. He went on to get a master's degree in uh, laws for taxation from Georgetown and came back to the law school in 1966 and embarked on a truly remarkable career. Over his 35 years teaching here, he won virtually every award that can be given to a faculty member, not only of the law school, but of the college. Not only that, he held many administrative positions at the law school and at the college. He was a giant at the bar and in the community. In 1997, recognizing John's many contributions in the way he epitomizes what this law school tries to do in training citizen lawyers. The Law School Alumni Association awarded the Citizen Lawyer Award to John Donaldson. Aside from all that, the real reason that this award is named for him is because of the effect he had on his students throughout the years. I know many people who took tax courses and other courses from John Donaldson. Without exception, they all admire him greatly. Indeed, I'd say that they love him. He has achieved what every teacher would like to achieve in terms of impact on students. In 2000, after John Donaldson announced his retirement for the upcoming spring, <clears throat> then President Tim Sullivan, former dean of the law school, wrote a tribute that was published in the Law Review. And I want to quote one sentence. He was a teacher deeply admired, even revered, by his students. It is still true today. Now, we do not give this award lightly. To receive this award, a student must have excelled in at least three tax courses. Believe it or not, there are students who take at least three tax <laughs> courses. Indeed, there are approximately 20 members of this class who took at least three tax courses, several of whom took more than three. Um, and it turns out, because this is such a strong class, that we actually have two recipients of the inaugural Donaldson Award. John, can you please join me? With Tim. Now, I first met John almost 40 years ago. In appearance, he has changed very little. <laughs> that same cannot be said of someone else up here. Um, anyway, with two recipients, it takes more than one of us to present this award. And ironically enough, uh, these two recipients have the same initial for their first and last name. The inaugural John E. Donaldson Award for the Most Outstanding Tax Students in the class of 2013 goes to Candace Karatke and Kelsey Kramer.
session of the Virginia State Bar and the Virginia chapter of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers co-sponsor a family law book award. That's presented to a graduating student at each Virginia law school who has demonstrated the most promise and potential in the practice of family law. Uh, the award consists both of a book, which will be sent to the recipient uh, next week, together with a certificate of achievement, which we will present now. Very pleased to announce that this year's recipient of the Family Law Book Award is Jillian Jacobs. Most of the awards today are being given to JD students here at the law school, but the law school offers one other degree in addition to the JD degree, and that is the LLM degree, which is offered to international students. These students uh, take all the same courses that the JD students do, and they sit side by side with them in their classes. The next two awards are to be given to some of these uh, outstanding LLM students uh, the students, uh, the first award that I will uh, announce is the Graduate Academic Excellence Award. Now let me explain a little bit about what it is. This is the functional equivalent uh, of Order of the Coif. These are the students who performed in the very top of their, uh, their class, uh, earning grades uh, on a par with uh, the level for the Coif students who are JD students. This year we have uh, four recipients and I will read their names and if they would um, come up, one of them is not here, Elizabeth Holden, but the other three are. And the first recipient is Lee, Leah Dye. Would you please come up? <clears throat> Emily Wong. <clears throat> and Hua Dong. go too far away. Uh, the, sec <laughs> the second award uh, uh, recognizes excellent in excellence in legal writing. These students, uh, all of them, are required to take a one-year course e in each semester, that is, uh, to develop their legal writing skills in English. Now, if you think it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to get uh, grades in American uh, law school courses taught in English, can you imagine uh, how hard it is in this course? This year we have uh, four winners uh, uh, as well, and uh, some of the same people who are just up here, um, not surprisingly, are, are winners. And let me read their names. All four of them are here, I believe. Uh, Hua Dong, Leah Dai, Joanna Luo, and Emily Wong. Would you please come up? <laughs> I'm Warren Billings, and I teach the history of early American law here at the law school. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and it is, I, first of all, I want to congratulate all the awardees. This 
uh, is one more testament to the thing that I always tell people at home in New Orleans when they ask me what it's like teaching William Mary Law students. Yeah, I say they're some of the finest students I've ever taught, and this year is certainly no exception. Now, as, the, uh, as an historian of law, I get to award the uh, William Hamilton Prize for Outstanding Performance in Legal History. And this year it goes to Matt Tutoro, who was a student I first encountered last year. He survived my seminar and uh, was a glutton for punishment and came back and did an independent uh, research project with me. He wrote a paper called A World of Paper Bonds and Iron Shackles, International Antecedents and Influence on American Slave Law. Um, <clears throat> He explored the origins of slave law in the American South, and as his title implies, he put that development in an international cross-cultural context instead of merely concentrating on British antecedents. The essay, I must say, is one of the finest I've ever gotten from a graduate student or a law student. Uh, it rests on impeccable research that's wide-ranging. It's soundly argued. It displays a gifted stylist feel for the written word and it bids the reader to rethink their un readers to rethink their understanding of how the law of slavery came to be. As someone who has more than a passing familiarity with the subject, I can say that Matt's paper is a, of a quality that is every bit the equal of seasoned historians of American law. I should also say that it's perhaps a good thing that Matt will become a practicing attorney instead of a journeyman professional historian because he would give those of us who are practicing historians a run for their money. <laughs> Matt, having you for a student was a great joy. I congratulate you on your achievement, and I'm pleased to award you the Hamilton Prize. Ladies and gentlemen, the Herman Prize is named in honor of an extraordinary, wonderful, high-tech lawyer in Delaware, Richard Herman. He's all that any lawyer should ever want to be. It's an award that we only give when clearly merited. It consists of a plaque, which the recipient actually gets to keep, <laughs> and a small but nonetheless real check. We only make this award when there is a clearly deserving recipient. And this year, there are a number of potential candidates, I must confess. As to its criteria and for its recipient, it is perhaps best if I simply read it. The Law School of the College of William and Mary in Virginia, to all who shall see these presents reading, this is to certify the 2013 Herman Prize has been awarded to Melanie Fredette in recognition of having demonstrated great potential in making future contributions to the enhancement of litigation through the innovative use of courtroom technology. Ms. Verdette's continuing and selfless efforts to assist the Center for Legal and Court Technology in its experimental, operational, academic efforts have brought great credit upon her and this institution and served as an inspiration to others. It is signed by the Dean, the President of the National Center for State Courts, and I must confess, me as well. <laughs> is the Crutchco Freeze Labor Law Award. And this is donated uh, to us by the Crutchco Freeze uh, Law Firm in Baltimore, Maryland. This goes to the student who has most excelled in employment and labor law. We have a number of us who teach employment and labor, and labor law, and we all fight about, you know, we have to like reach a consensus about who should get this. And we kind of whittle it down a little bit, whittle it down a little bit, but we basically had to come up with two names, not one. So the two names are, and I hope they're here, Rachel Gillen and Alexandria Poole.
both of these students have excelled even above and beyond the many wonderful employment law students we've had at the law school. Laura Killinger, and it is my distinct pleasure today to present the Legal Skills Scholar Awards. The Legal Skills Scholar Awards go to every graduating student who has earned the honor of achieving honors in every, uh, at least three out of four semesters of the Legal Skills program. This is a, uh, quite a feat that requires consistent excellence in every area of legal skills. Uh, quite a bit of dedication, and frankly, more than just a few nights of late nights wrestling over legal drafts. So when I call your name, please come forward. Patrick C. Barry, Anna T. Birkenheyer, Andrea R. Bowden, Daniel R. Bochert, Thomas P. Burnham, Brian J. Daly, Matthew R. Diatley, Daniel E. Doty, Devani A. Dufer, Tiffany M. Ferris, John A. Fisher, Williams B. Fisk, Melanie R. Fredette, Thomas A. Garnett, Marissa N. Goldberg, Naomi M. Harrelson, John B. Hoke, Laura E. Householder, Casey E. Inman, Anna M. Killius, Marion A. Levy, Lindsay N. Lujan, Julius E. Magnum, Samuel G. Mann, Barbara J. Marmot, Adam S. McGonagall, Dina K. Mueller, Sean R. Renahan, Meredith B. Snow, Unisa Sumani, Vladislava Soshansky, Jordan E. Stanaway, Lee E. Tangle, Jared O. Taylor III, Stephen B. Torok, Rebecca L. Vanderslock, Tessa M. Vinson, Catherine E. Ward, Andrew J. Wolf, and Mary E. Wolf. Hello again. I am still Susan Grover, <laughs> and it's now my honor to award the National Association of Women Lawyers Award, and this is for leadership in women's rights and related issues. And a number of faculty worked very hard to try to whittle this one down because this class has amazing leadership on women, women's issues, issues of gender and gender-related stuff. So, Ultimately, it was a difficult task, 
We whittled it down to two people, which it should not uh, make the rest of you feel that you didn't do a wonderful job. These two people, for all their leadership and support in the area of women's rights, are Jules Irvin Rooney and Lindsay M. She says Lujan, I don't know. She just got married. <laughs> Yeah, Lindsay just got married, so she picked up the new name last night, actually. things that lawyers are best known for is attempting to help people settle disputes. And indeed, if you watch television, it appears that not only do we help them, we help complicate their lives immensely in the process. Ultimately, if we are unable to settle a dispute successfully, we go to court. And quite frankly, it's the fear of going to court that drives much dispute resolution. Accordingly, we need lawyers who are skilled trial lawyers. Practitioners who are highly ethical, who are competent, and understand human beings. Accordingly, I am especially honored to be able to announce the winner of the 2013 Virginia Trial Lawyers Award for Excellence in Trial Advocacy, which consists of a certificate and a check, Janeni Iyengar. Can you please come up? school education experience is work on a law review. We have five student edited law reviews at this law school. The William and Mary Law Review, the William and Mary Bill of Rights Journal, the William and Mary Environmental Law and Policy Review, the William and Mary Journal of Women in the Law, and the William and Mary Business Law Review. These five journals this year published well in excess of 5,000 pages of legal scholarship I hate to imagine the many thousands of hours, literally, that went into selecting articles and notes for publication, editing, and site checking those articles and notes. And let me say this to the parents in the room. If you had a hard time reaching your child uh, in the last year or two, <laughs> let me tell you, they were probably squirreled away in the library somewhere, site checking an article. You can ask them what site checking means. Uh, it's not a lot of fun, but it's something that has to be done. What are the marks of distinction of a law review? is how often is its work actually cited? Does anyone care what we publish? And so there are assessments of law reviews by which we measure their impact based on how often judges or other scholars cite their work. And let me say this, our five law reviews are extraordinarily influential in terms of how frequently judges and scholars cite their work. And let me, I'm, I'm going to speak about each one very briefly. The William & Mary Law Review is now the 19th most cited law review in the United States. The William & Mary Bill of Rights Journal is the second most cited specialty law journal in the field of civil rights. And the third most cited specialty uh, law journal in the field of constitutional law. The William & Mary Environmental Law and Policy Review is the most cited specialty law journal in the field of energy law. And it's the 11th most cited specialty law review in the field of environmental law. The Women, William & Mary Journal of Women in the Law is the 10th most cited specialty law review in the fields of gender studies, women, and sexuality. And finally, our newest law review, the William & Mary Business Law Review, 
is the 11th most cited specialty law review in the field of corporate law and business associations, the 29th most cited specialty law review in the field of commercial law. Moreover, since the Business Law Review was founded in 2010, there have been 57 other student-run law reviews that have also been founded. So there are 58 law reviews that have been founded in the last four years. The Wimmer Business Law Review is one of them, and it's the second most cited of those 58 new journals, trailing only the Harvard National Security Journal. So congratulations to each student who has served on one of the law reviews. In a minute, we'll have special recognition for a few members from each of these journals, but I would like to invite any student here, if you worked on a law journal, please stand up. Congratulations to each one of you. You do marvelous work, and you do a tremendous amount to enhance the prestige of our, of our law school. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm the uh, advisor of the Environmental Law and Policy Review, and I have the uh, honor to recognize the most outstanding student note uh, for the current volume of this review. And the recipient this year is William Fisk. Jefferson Prize is uh, the prize for the best student note for the William and Mary Bill of Rights Journal. Uh, this year's uh, prize was awarded to Emily Whitehurst, and I would just like to recognize her for that achievement, and Emily was, not, uh, was unable to attend this afternoon. So uh, just to recognize her achievement, Emily Whitehurst, the winner of the Thomas Jefferson Prize. I'm Jane Barnard and I teach corporate and securities law and for one brief second I want you to think about a giant bank. Billions of dollars, lots of power, loaning money to big corporate borrowers on the one hand and owning stock in those very same companies on the other. Lots of information over here. What can they do over here? A very vexatious problem of insider trading, one which has befuddled giant banks in this country and around the world, and the subject of the best student note in this year's volume of the Business Law Review. The title of the note is Scaling Chinese Walls, Insights from Athra versus J.P. Morgan Chase, and its author is Jeffrey Bingham. to him anyway. <laughs> but it's nice because we get to recognize two other members of the uh, staff of the Business Law Review, without whom all of these thousands of pages and all of this site checking and all of this work would go for naught. They do an amazing amount of invisible work to get these journals out, and the Business Law Review is happy to recognize two of them this afternoon, Anna Birkenheimer and Daniel Borchert. Enough of 
big banks and another big business. Let's talk about a little bottle of cream or oil or unguent or goo or whatever, whose purpose is to make us look more beautiful. The best student note for the Journal of Women in the Law this year dealt with those kinds of cosmetics and specifically the kinds of advertising that makes us spend billions of dollars every year on these cosmetic products. The title of the best note was called, quote, actual results may vary. <laughs> Toward fiercer national regulation of digitally manipulated cosmetics advertising. You can just imagine this note. It's terrific and its author is Jason Ray. the award for the best student note for the William and Mary Law Review. This award goes to Jared Taylor for his note entitled, Information Wants to be Free of Sanctions. Why the President Cannot Prohibit Foreign Access to Social Media Under U.S. Export Regulations. I wish I had time to describe this article in more detail. It is a fascinating read, and all I will say is that it skillfully and sophisticatedly weaves together Twitter with Treasury export sanctions. Now you just keep thinking of that. Thank you. You know, I probably ought to say a word about these plaques. Um, <laughs> Some of you might be wondering, well, now, why is it that the law school uh, wants to keep the plaques? What, can, we, uh, can we have plaques? Everybody? These plaques actually, this is a good thing. They will rest on the walls of the law school forever. And so it's kind of fun. I love doing this, going back and seeing the plaques 20 years ago to think about who won the Law Review, Outstanding Law Review note or the, or the Labor and Employment Prize. And so in the law school lobby prominently displayed will be the names of many members of the class of 2013 in perpetuity. We turn now to the competition team awards. Um, it comes as no surprise to any of us that law students are competitive. Uh, and an important part of legal education are competition exercises. And as it happens, the grand tradition of law school competitions began at William and Mary. In 1780, we were, the, of course, the first law school. And the, one of the first things our first law professor, George Wythe, introduced at this law school was the tradition of the moot court. This had been a medieval English practice. It had gone into disuse during the 17th century. And Wythe knew about it, and he thought it would be a terrific way to train students in the art of oral advocacy. So the competition tradition began here in the 18th century. And it continues in, with tremendous uh, fervor here at the law school and has ever since. What I'd like to do now is to talk about uh, each of our competition teams, and I'm going to read out the names of students who participated in these teams who enjoyed particular success. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'll read your name if you'll stand up, and I'll uh, tell the audience uh, a little bit about your success, and then we'll just sort of move through each of the students with each of the teams. Um, this is actually a long list, <laughs> happily. So we begin with the Moot Court team. Jessica Delaney was a finalist and the best oralist in the final round at the 2012 Billings, Exum, and Fry National Moot Court Tournament. She was also a member of the quarterfinalist team at the 2012 Chicago Bar Association National Moot Court Tournament. Lauren Feibel was a member of the quarterfinalist team at the Hassell National Moot Court Tournament. Rachel Gillen was a quarterfinalist and the writer of the best brief at the 2012 Ruby Vale 
corporate moot court competition. She was also a Region 4 semifinalist for the 2012-13 New York City Bar Association National Championship and a semifinalist in third best brief at the Pace International Criminal Court moot, comp moot court competition. Brian Jividen was a finalist in the second best oralist at the Hassell National Moot Court Tournament in 2012. James Gross, a finalist at the 2012 Hassell National Moot Court Tournament. Candace Hedden, a quarterfinalist at the 2012 Hassell National Moot Court Tournament. These teams, by the way, have there are more than one on a team, which is why you're wondering uh, why we have multiple names. They'll often compete in teams of three. Bob Marnett, semifinalist at the 2013 Wexler Criminal Procedure Moot Court Tournament. Alexander O'Dell, quarterfinalist at the 2012 Hassell National Moot Court Tournament. Gregory Singer a member of the best new team at the 2013 Judge Brown Admiralty Moot Court Competition. Nicholas Singer, member of the best new team at the same John Judge Brown Admiralty Moot Court Competition. Michelle Sedano, quarterfinalist and writer of the best brief at the 2012 Ruby Vale Corporate Moot Court Competition. Also, Michelle was a Region 4 semifinalist at the 2012-13 New York City Bar Association National Championship. Tessa Vinson, finalist at the Billings Exum and Fry National Moot Court Tournament and a quarterfinalist at the 2012 Chicago Bar Association National Moot Court Tournament. Melanie Walter, fifth best oralist at the Stetson International Environmental Law School Law Moot Court Tournament. And Ashley Wright, a semifinalist at the 2013 Pace Criminal Court Moot Court Competition. Congratulations to all members of the Moot Court. Our trial team has also enjoyed uh, extraordinary success in recent years, including with the class of 2013, and I'm going to also read out to you some of the more successful members of our trial team. Janini Iyengar, first place team and best advocate at the 2011 Stetson National Pretrial Competition, and second place at the 2013 Academy of Trial Lawyers Competition. Aaron Jones, semifinalist at the 2011 Puerto Rico Trial Advocacy Competition and a quarterfinalist at the Capital City Challenge trial competitions in both 2012 and 2013. Anna Gillespie, a finalist at the 2011 ABA Section of Labor and Employment Law trial advocacy com competition, and, a, and, a, and that was in 2011, and then a semifinalist in the same competition the following year in 2012. Tom Garnett was a finalist at the 2011 ABA Labor and Employment Law trial advocacy competition in 2011, and then a quarterfinalist at the 2013 Texas Young Lawyers Association now National Trial Competition. Vlada Sashkina, National Qualifier at the 2013 Texas Young Lawyers Association National Trial Competition. Abby Paulus, quarterfinalist at the 2013 Capital City Challenge Trial Competition. Lauren Feibel, finalist at the 2013 ABA Section of Labor and Employment Law Trial Ad Competition, and a quarterfinalist at the 2013 George Mason National Criminal, Criminal Law Trial Competition. James Gorsuch, national qualifier at the 2013 Texas Young Lawyers Association National Trial Competition. Dwayne Bars was the best advocate at the 2013 South Texas Mock Trial Challenge. Dennis DeMarco was a finalist at the 2013 ABA Section of Labor and Employment Law Trial Ad Competition and a national qualifier at the 2013 Texas Young Lawyers National Trial Competition. <laughs> Congratulations to our trial team. We have a, a, a newer uh, competitive team, the Alternative Dispute Resolution Team, which enjoyed success, and I'd like to tell you about their success. Justin Myramus, member of the first place team at the ABA Regional Negotiation Tournament and a member of the semifinalist team at the ABA National Negotiation Tournament. Greg Singer was a member of the third place team at the ABA National Arbitration Tournament in 2011, and Mary Button, a member of the third place team at the ABA National Arbitration Tournament in 2011. Congratulations to the Alternative Dispute Resolution Team. And then finally, in the last couple years, William and Mary has entered the tax competition world. Yes, tax lawyers compete. 
And there's actually a very prominent tax competition. It's held at the ABA uh, mid-year meeting down in Orlando, Florida. This year, 88 law schools competed. William and Mary finished second. And the two members of that team, Candace Karaki and Kate Ward. If you are here today and you have been a member of any of our many competition teams, would you please stand up and receive our appreciation? society recognizing superior advocacy. To be elected to the Order of the Barristers, a student must have uh, contributed substantially in an oral argument, a program either in the administration of an advocacy program or through competition. Uh, the selection is limited by uh, the student's uh, participation in these competitive activities, and only eight students can be selected from any school, from our school. Uh, the selection uh, has been made, and the following people have been selected for the Order of the Barristers. Please come up. <laughs> Jessica Louise Delaney. <laughs> Thomas Arthur Garnett. <laughs> Rachel Fleming Gillen. <laughs> Anna Grace Gillespie. Janani Iyengar, Aaron Jones, Alexa Rose Rogenkamp, and Reed Charles Schweitzer. Please come up. Central to the education of a William & Mary Law student is training in the ethic of professionalism. Each year, we recognize a group of students for displaying a particularly powerful commitment to professionalism over the course of their three years at William & Mary Law School. Professor Laura Killinger will present the first set of these awards. The Gambrell, Gambrell Professionalism Award represents one of the highest honors in the Legal Skills Program. Every spring, the supervising partners of each of the second year firms in the Legal Skills Program choose one Legal Skills student to receive the Gambrell Professionalism Reward. The partners examine the student's overall two-year performance in the Legal Skills Program, as well as the student's professionalism, public service, integrity, dedication to the improvement of lawyering skills themselves. The students are nominated by their peer students, and then the decision is ultimately made by the firm's partners. Each student will receive a Jefferson Cup and certificate. So the 14 Gambrell Professionalism recipients this year are Anna T. Birkenhauer, Andrea R. Bowden, Dennis A. DeMarco, please come forward. <laughs> William B. Fisk, Melanie F. Bradette, Thomas A. Garnett, James E. Gross, John B. Holt, Casey E. Iman, Barbara J. Marmot, Meredith B. Snow, Vanessa Sumani, Lee E. Tankle, and Jared Taylor III.
Good afternoon. I am not, nor have I ever been, Susan Grover. <laughs> but I do have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to work every year with students who give back an incredible amount to the communities and the societies in which they live. And that's appropriate because the citizen lawyer tradition of William and Mary reflects the principle that it's important to be an ethical, effective, skilled, creative attorney, but that's not enough. Citizen lawyers have an obligation not only to their clients and the profession, but also to their communities and society as a whole. It's my pleasure today to acknowledge members of the graduating class who have distinguished themselves as citizen lawyers through pro bono community and public service. And these are awards that Dean Douglas referred to earlier that the students have already received the recognition, so I'm going to ask them to stand when their name is called. The first recognition is for the Presidential Management Fellowships. The Presidential Management Fellowship Program recognizes outstanding graduates from every master's, doctoral, and law program nationwide who have a clear interest and commitment to public service. The PMF program is the federal government's flagship initiative to develop a cadre of government leaders. The selection process is very competitive, and this year's was the most competitive ever. Only 663 of over 12,000 applicants, that's only 5.5%, were selected as finalists this year, and two of those are members of William Mary Law School's class of 2013. It's my pleasure to ask Graham Chilton and Rachel Proventure to stand and be recognized. I'm Susan Grover. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure to now present the Spong Professionalism Award. This award is given by the Society of Alumni of the College of William and Mary to a third year law student who best exemplifies professionalism and ethics in the Legal Skills Program. Of all of those 14 Gambrell professional um, recipients that you saw up here just a few moments ago, they select one member to become the recipient of the Spong Professionalism Award. It is my distinct pleasure to announce that the 2013 recipient is Lee Tank. As we all know, a central part of the William and Mary legal education is, and the, and the profile of a William and Mary student and graduate is a commitment to public service. And so we turn to that portion of the awards that deal with students who have been pr particularly exemplary in the field of service. For the past decade or so, the law school has conferred on a small number of students a dean's certificate. Now these are uh, certificates are given to students who have been nominated by their peers and selected by the dean's office and who have demonstrated particularly compelling service to the law school during their three years here. It's not easy to pick 20 students or so each year, but we've done so after a careful review of the nominations that we received from members of the class of 2013. And I'd like to invite this year's recipients to come forward. Anna Birkenheyer, Thomas Burnham, Thomas Klebeck, Diana Cooper, Jessica Delaney, Daniel Doty, Jordan Evans, Brian Jividen, Jules Carter Urban Rooney, Janini Iyengar, Dominic Lippman, Lindsay Meyer Lujan, Rachel Procopio, Shanna Rulbach, Bailey Rose, Mary Carson Saunders, Patrick Slabonic, Meredith Snow, 
Vlada Sashkina, Lee Tankle, Stephen Torcott, Amelia Vance. Many of the organizations at the law school are founded for an express purpose of engaging in service to the law school and to the broader community. And I'd like to mention just one organization that I think has been particularly outstanding this year in this regard, and that is the Black Law Students Association. They have engaged, this group, I think more than any other student group, engages an extraordinary number of public service projects throughout the year. And I'll just mention one. It's become one of the great traditions in the law school that Balsa sponsors every year. And that's our Thanksgiving basket collection that takes place the week or two before Thanksgiving. This year, Balsa and the students of the law school and the faculty of the law school and everybody in the law school contributed almost 4,200 articles of food, turkeys, boxes of stuffing, everything under the sun to feed needy families on the peninsula. So it's really a tribute, not just to Balsa, but to the entire William and Mary community that we have such an extraordinarily giving community. I would like each member of Balsa who's here, if they would stand. programs where close to 150 second and third year students annually work under the supervision of an attorney, providing direct representation to clients in need who couldn't otherwise afford the services, while still in their teaching environment of law school. If you are one of the students who have so ably served clients in our community in a clinical program during your law school experience, I'd like to ask you to stand and be recognized for your efforts. school and your community thanks you. Recognizing the importance of these pro bono efforts in our nation's law schools, the Clinical Legal Education Association encourages selection of one student at each law school as that year's outstanding clinical student. Now this is a difficult choice to make as you can see from the number of students who have done such an outstanding job for their clients. But this year's outstanding students spent one semester in our special education advocacy clinic working tirelessly on behalf of children with special needs and worked so expertly that I then asked her to serve as a teaching assistant in the clinic for the subsequent semester. She spent her third year enrolled in our new appellate and Supreme Court litigation clinic where Professor Breckenridge commented that this student epitomized the ideal clinical student. She put in obvious extra effort to make sure everything was done right, paid great attention to the details, and then anticipated the clinic's needs and the client's needs by going beyond doing what was asked of her perfectly and performing tasks that no one asked her to do but were greatly appreciated. The 2013 Clinical Education Association Outstanding Student Award goes to Jessica Delaney, a student who spent two years of law school dedicated to helping clients, real clients in real crisis.
The Yule Awards are given each year to a group of undergraduate and graduate students who have contributed significant service to the college. Now let me say this to the parents and families who are here. You really didn't think you were going to come to William & Mary for a graduation weekend without getting a history lesson. So I'm going to give you one right now. The Yule Awards. Who was Yule and, and what did Yule do that was so special? Benjamin Yule was president of the College of William & Mary from the early 1850s until the early 1890s. This was one of the worst times in this college's 300-year history to be president. Yule was the 16th president of the College of William and Mary, and he had something in common with the 16th president of the United States of America. They both served at the same time, and they both thought it was an abomination for Virginia to secede from the Union. They were both staunch Unionists. And Yule pled with his fellow Virginians not to secede from the Union in the same way that President Lincoln did. But Yule failed, and of course the war came. There's not a college in America that was more devastated by the Civil War than the College of William and Mary, because we were ground zero for the Peninsula Campaign. The college closed in May of 1861 and was absolutely devastated. Most of the buildings were eventually burned to the ground in the course of the conflict. Now, Yule, of course, remained president of the College of William & Mary, but he had no college. When the war ended, Virginia was devastated, and he, but Yule was determined to reopen the college. And so he used his own fortune and he mortgaged his own house to raise funds to reopen the college in 1869. And so the college stumbled along for a few years, but in 1881 it could go no further. It was out of students, it was out of money. And so Yule, though still president, having lost his home that he had mortgaged away and lost his fortune, had to recognize that the college would be closed. And so in 1881, the college was closed. But every morning, Benjamin Yule got up, he went to the Wren building, he rang the Wren bell, signifying that the college was still alive, it had no students, but someday the college would return. Seven years later, it did after Benjamin Yule had rung that bell every day for seven years. And so the Yule Award, and he eventually did return as president in the late 1880s and died a few years later, and the college, of course, has never been closed since. The Yule Awards are given in his memory, recognizing his service to the College of William and Mary. Earlier this spring, in this group of undergraduate students and graduate and professional students who received the Yule Award, in honor of their service to the College of William and Mary, there were two members of the class of 2013, and I'd like for them both to stand. Kevin Barrett and Anna Pulliam. <laughs> and thus endeth the history lesson. <laughs> I now call to the podium Dominic Lippmann, president of the George Wythe Society, who will present the George Wythe Society Award. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Douglas. In a moment, I'm going to have the opportunity and the honor to present a plaque. And it's one of the plaques that we will be giving back today. Um, before I do that, though, I'd like to take a moment as a representative of the class of 2013 to thank the faculty, staff, and administration. Um, they have been invaluable. As we go forth in the world, those of us who succeed will proudly say that we were your students. And for those of us that fail, you can tell everyone we went to UVA. <laughs> as president of the George Ritz Society, I had the great honor to lead our group of citizen lawyers this year. In meeting with Dean Douglas and planning our agenda, we realized that there were some acknowledgments that we just hadn't been recognizing. And one of those was for a faculty or staff member for what they do out in the community beyond the walls of law school. Dean Douglas was gracious enough to support our efforts to present that recognition here today. And it will be a recognition that's presented every year going forward. When we decided that we were going to do this, we very quickly narrowed down our list of acceptable candidates and people that we thought were deserving recipients. And we very quickly came down to one name. That individual has spent their entire life serving other people. 
I can tell you from firsthand experience, having had this individual as a professor, that their dedication to helping others does not end at the classroom door. This is an individual who has spent a career as a JAG officer, a retired colonel, a prosecutor, a defense attorney, and a trial judge. He has spent over 30 years as a professor at William and Mary Law School. He leads the Center for Legal and Courtroom Technology. He is one of the best professors, not only at William and Mary, but anywhere. And it is my great honor and privilege to present this award to Professor Frederick Lederer. Good afternoon. That was a tough act to follow, but I'll do my best. Um, I'm Jen Stevenson, and I'm a legal writing faculty and also associate director of the LLM program. I'm pleased this afternoon to announce two community involvement awards, uh, who, which will be given to two of our LLM students. As Dean Rosenberg may have mentioned, our LLM students are pursuing a master's degree in the American legal system and they're only here for one year. These two individuals have made a, a big impression on us this year uh, in, the, in their short time, and I'd like to recognize them. The first is Humara Nuristani, and the second is Vincent Jong. I don't think that Humara can be uh, with us today, so please come up, Vincent, and get your certificate. Thank you. One of the most vital institutions at the law school is the Honor Council. It protects and nurtures the climate of trust that is central to the Women Mary Law School community and is integral to our community life together. The Honor Council has been led very ably this year by a member of the class of 2013, Jordan Evans. Jordan is not able to be with us today, but I wanted to recognize him and I'd like to invite the other three L members of the Honor Council to come forward and be recognized. Elizabeth Epps, Laura Dorr, Candace Hedden, Oriana Madeira, and Sarah Sufer. If you'll please come forward. Each year, we uh, select a group of two and three L students to uh, act as teaching assistants in the first year courses. This is a very competitive selection process, and these students uh, are tasked with the responsibility of assisting the one L students, the first year students, in uh, mastering the subjects that they're uh, going through in their first year of law school. Uh, the selection uh, has resulted in, I think, very beneficial program that has helped uh, almost all of the law students who have taken advantage of it, and we've heard very good things about it. I would like to uh, uh, identify and thank all the graduating students who participated in the uh, academic support program as a teaching assistant over the last two years. They are Thomas Burnham, Alex Horney, and please come up. Um, Janani uh, Iyengar, Jillian Jacobs, Amanda Lothar, Bonnie Mangold, 
Jay Mangold, Nicholas Mergolo, Anna Pulliam, Christopher Sickles, Anissa Somani, Vladislava Shoshkina, Rebecca Vanderlaski, and Catherine Ward. the legal practice program selects successful students, two and three L's, to help administer the legal practice program. These students become legal practice program writing fellows, and the nature of their job is to help incoming 1L students master such difficult tasks such as memo writing, brief writing, negotiations, mediations, client interviews, and generally calming anxious the nerves of anxious incoming 1Ls. The legal practice program and I am indebted to the following people who are some of our legal practice program writing fellows this year. When I call your name, please come forward. Tom, Thomas Burnham, Tricia Brown, Jessica Delaney, Wesley Evans, <coughs> Tiffany Ferris, Amanda Lauter, Jalise Magny, <laughs> Adam McGonigal, Paige Nestle, Rachel Provencher, Sean Renahan, Alexa Rogenkamp, Vlada Soskina, Michelle Sedano, and Emily Whitehurst. are in apple order, but the students aren't necessary. <laughs> Experience, our students learn how to be actual lawyers while representing our, nation, our nation's disabled military veterans. We represent both active duty service members and those who stopped wearing their combat boots long ago. So at this point, it seems appropriate to ask our family and friends and, and faculty members who are here celebrating with us today, if you have served or are serving in our nation's military, would you stand so we can recognize you? to honor those graduates who gave freely of their time and volunteered to learn how to be someone else's attorney by helping the most deserving among us. Each of the students being honored today excelled and rose to the challenge. The Lewis B. Puller Jr. Veterans Benefits Clinic Award of Excellence is symbolized in a small token that each of the honorees will receive and those in the military know well. It's the challenge coin. 
And the tradition of coins in the military, uh, another history lesson, I'm sorry, but you probably need to know. <laughs> the tradition of coins in the military began when soldiers in the Civil War and World War I left for battle. They wanted to remember something from home, so they carried a coin in their pocket. And many of them kept these coins after to remember their experiences. Now today, coins are carried by members of all of our armed services. And the coins identify the bearer as a member of a particular unit with a, a well-defined history and mission. A coin isn't merely a token, but it's tangible. It's a source of pride for every American warrior on every level of the chain of command. Commanders use them as on-the-spot awards for excellence, and they're a symbol of gratitude or a job well done. So the Lewis B. Puller Jr. Veterans Benefits Clinic Award was designed with this history and meaning in mind, and it was actually designed by one of our graduates here today, our, uh, our teaching assistant, Diana Cooper, who's, who's here. Um, she did a great job on this. <laughs> These coins display the William and Mary moniker on the front, and on the back you'll find the motto of the Puller Clinic, which is serving those who sacrificed. It also has the three principles of this, this clinic, and, and two of them are for our students, um, professionalism and selfless service, and the third is heroism. So in the center of this coin is a compass as well, because we're always pointing people in the right direction. We promise never to be a closed door. So it's my distinct pleasure to award this coin to members of the 3L class who went above and beyond in their support of our nation's heroes. In this past year alone, these students have volunteered 1,900 hours on behalf of veterans, represented active duty service members in medical retirements for complicated issues like post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injuries, and educated approximately 40 veterans at outreaches and homeless shelters across the peninsula. They truly are William and Mary's best examples of citizen lawyers, and I am honored to have worked with each one of them. So I'd like to call you up and, and please come up and get your award. Um, our teaching assistant, Diana Cooper. <laughs> Marine Lieutenant Kevin Barrett. <laughs> James Brazos. Soon to be Air Force Lieutenant Aaron Jones. <laughs> Thomas Jornstad. Marion Levy. Captain Travis Roberts. Reed Schweitzer, Joe Sherman, soon to be Army Lieutenant Evan Stovall, <laughs> Michelle Sedano, Lauren Sutton, Andrew Wolf, Mary Wolf, and our second half of the newlywed couple, not to be forgotten, Army Captain Dustin Lujan. I am not Claire Maddox, as it says in your program, but I'm hoping to do uh, as fine a job as she would have done if she were here. She sends her regards. In 2009, our law school formed the Special Education Advocacy Clinic to assist children with special needs and their families in working with schools to meet the educational needs of these students. Law students working under my supervision offer their services to families at no charge. These services are invaluable to the families who receive them. The Special Education Advocacy Award recognizes a student for outstanding service to children with special needs. The award was established by Claire Maddox, class of, the, class of 2005, and her husband, Bob, given in honor of their son, Evan, who has cerebral palsy and in loving memory of his twin brother, Brooks. On their behalf, I am pleased and honored to present this award. Claire and Bob draw great inspiration from their son, Evan, whose persistence and desire to keep trying and to do more is boundless. And they know firsthand the challenges that advocating for an exceptional child can present. They are grateful for all of this, the efforts of our students who aid families like theirs. This year's award goes to Brian Daly. Brian is not in attendance, but I'll briefly note that his selection is grounded in the qualities that you might expect. 
He did excellent work for each of his clients. He showed compassion for those whom he represented. He counseled them with great empathy. And he developed an expertise in special education law. The most compelling reason, though, for him to receive the award is that when he concluded his outstanding work in his semester in the clinic, he asked if he could remain assigned to the case of one 11-year-old with complicated and numerous genetic and emotional issues that impacted him in his behavior in school and in his education. Brian handled the complexities of court-appointed and guardian ad litem counsel, juvenile court procedures, family counseling and special education advocacy with diligence, empathy, and expertise. And he did all of that throughout a semester in his third year, no doubt, the spring semester, with no credit because he didn't want to stop helping the family while they were facing such difficult circumstances. So I'm delighted with Brian's selection as this year's recipient. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Faye Sheely, and I had the honor and pleasure of working with all of our graduates during their law school admission process. I was then, as I am now, proud of your accomplishments and excited about your future. Congratulations to each member of the class of 2013. Would the following graduates please come forward? Kevin Barrett, Matthew Bradshaw, Laura Dorr, Lauren Feibel, Lauren Ford, Ryan Jividen, Laura Householder, Jillian Jacobs, Bonnie Mangold, Jay Mangold, Samuel Mann, Alexandra Poole, Alana Shosakena, Lee Tankle, Gabriel Walker, and Catherine Ward. Each year, student volunteers give generously of their time to assist the admission office with recruitment and enrollment activities. Admission programs are strengthened by our enthusiastic student volunteers. And on behalf of William & Mary Law School, I'd like to say how much we have appreciated and have valued your work while you've been a member of the law school community. You have given countless tours, emailed numerous perspective and admitted students, participated in phonathons, hosted guests overnight, served on admitted student weekend panels, coordinated and organized group visits, and many, many other tasks that we have asked of you. You have represented the law school during hours of law school fairs and recruitment visits and events, carefully responding to difficult curriculum questions, as well as answering the really tough ones, like, where is Williamsburg? <laughs> what do people do in Williamsburg? <laughs> And my personal favorite, directions to downtown. <laughs> On behalf of the entire law school, thank you for all that you've done for admissions and for the school community. We know you will continue to represent the law school well as distinguished alumni, both professionally and individually, and um, professionally. The law school is a better place for all that you have done, and for this, we give you an award of excellence and say thank you. As they exit the stage, I do want to thank the, the student ambassadors to the admission office. They really do do a marvelous job, and I'll tell you this, uh, this year, nationwide law school applications are down. There are only 10 law schools in the United States that have an increase in applications this year. We happen to be one of them. We had 300 more applications this year than we did a year ago. In fact, we have uh, this year 5,800 applications for about 190 seats in the class, and this is one of the reasons why. It's the terrific job that our student ambassadors do, as well as our dean of admission, uh, Faye Sheely, who you just met, and it's also her birthday. So happy birthday, Faye. <laughs> The law school's student government organization is called the Student Bar Association, or the SBA. It does remarkably good and helpful work throughout the law school every year, and they had a really strong year this year. 
This year, Lee Tankle led the SBA with great skill and accomplishment, and I would like for him to step forward along with next year's SBA president, Sean Radomski, to present the SBA awards. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Dean Douglas said, the Student Bar Association serves as the law school's student government. Uh, we do a few things. We help to finance all of the various clubs and organizations. We serve as liaisons between the students and our uh, great administration. And we also um, plan a lot of student-wide student events, uh, such as the Barrister's Ball, our regular ski trips, and weekly bar reviews. Uh, students who serve on the Student Bar Association also help plan community service events for law students to get involved in. They serve as liaisons to the American Bar Association, and they also serve on the undergraduate uh, student Assembly and Graduate Council. It is with great pleasure uh, that I recognize the students today who have served uh, as Student Bar Association representatives sometime over the past three years, some of them for one, some of them for all three, uh, but without them, none of our work would be possible. So would the following students please step forward? Kevin Barrett, Kelsey Block, Spencer Bryson, Eric Charity, Xiaoyan Chen, Megan Coles, Dennis DeMarco, Lauren Feibel, Patricia Kim, Sarah Melchior, Alexandra Poole, Matthew Roman, and Vlada Soshkina. I'm mindful that I'm the next to the last person standing between you and a lot of food and drink at the reception, so bear with me. The law school recognizes students who during one or more years of law school provide at least 35 hours of pro bono legal service or volunteer service to charitable, religious, civic, governmental, and educational organizations or causes for the good of the community. True to the citizen lawyer tradition, the class of 2013 includes 43 William & Mary Law School public servants who provided over 2,000 hours of service. They secured relief for low-income clients who were facing eviction, at risk of losing their children, the victims of predatory lenders, and other civil wrongs. They safeguarded the rights of indigent criminal defendants. They volunteered at soup kitchens and homeless shelters. They served as mentors to disadvantaged children and tutored teenagers and adults. They nurtured the environment through park cleanups and recycling initiatives. They built houses for Habitat for Humanity. They organized drives to collect food, clothing, books, and toys. They literally saved lives by volunteering at blood drives and for the campus bone marrow drive. Each of these 43 graduates has received a certificate from the law school for their contributions. And you graduates, if you've been catching up on your food and sleep and reality TV since exams and didn't realize that the certificates are in your hanging file, so be sure to pick them up. <laughs> it's a privilege to recognize all of you now. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing until I've read the entire list. Kevin Barrett, Matthew Bradshaw, Alexander Conser, Megan Coles, Jessica Delaney, Elizabeth Epps, Lindsey Gill, Brian Jividen, Gary Godman, James Gorsuch, Brett Herbert, Maxwell Blavin, Zachary Hunt, Jules Irvin Rooney, Jillian Jacobs, Patricia Kim, Carrie Lasala, Dominic Lippman, Barbara Marmet, Sarah Melchior, Nicholas Mergolo, Peter Newman, Colleen Nichols, 
Stefan Erline, Pamela Palmer, Rakesh Parikh, Alexandria Poole, Jesse Pound, Rachel Procopio, Anna Pullian, Daniel Reeves, Sean Renahan, Shauna Rulbach, Bailey Rose, Lily Saffer, Joseph Sherman, Julie Smith, Vanessa Steltenpole, Patrick Taylor, Johannes Vermandel, Andrew Wolf, and Ashley Wright. Thank you for all you did to benefit the community. Well, we now come to the conclusion of this year's award ceremony. As you can tell, the class of 2013 truly is an extraordinary class, and I hope all the parents took note of the fact that, that our Student Bar Association sponsors a weekly bar review. They're studying every week. Can you believe it? <laughs> I would like, though, in all seriousness, do ask your students, uh, student graduate, about the bar review. They, they do study hard for the bar review. They do it in local bars. I mean, it's, it's very convenient. Um, Let's do, I would like all members of the class of 2013, if you'll stand and we can give you one final round of applause. Well, thank you very much. I now invite you to join us in the law school lobby for a reception, uh, food and drink, and a chance to congratulate our uh, newest, uh, soon to be newest members of the alumni body here at William Mary Law School, the class of 2013. So congratulations all. Look forward to seeing you at the law school lobby and then tomorrow afternoon at Lake Matoka.